watching AYV Television. Good evening, this is AYV's Primetime News and I'm Samuel Ibrahim Koroma. Let's start with the headlines. Resident of Constituency 110 complained of government neglect to conduct parliamentary by election. I think the events in Constituency 110 is very unfortunate for democracy, elections and development. Zimi Hospital calls for the establishment of COVID-19 center. When I move out and I will see one build, big building, it will have been the response center for Ebola. But like, that is not the case of um, COVID-19. An African Young Voices Media Empire backs International Media House Award. Now for the full news with Samuel Ibrahim Koruma. The World Food Programme's country director, Dr. Hussein Tal, has said the coronavirus outbreak in Sierra Leone has worsened issues of malnutrition and calls for timely action by all stakeholders. Dr. Tal made these statements during a nationwide launch of the implementation of the Moderate Acute Malnutrition Treatment Program for children between 6 to 59 months, pregnant and lactating women in Sierra Leone. Albert George Sheriff has more on the story. With support from Irish Aid, Japan, Edisia, and the government of Sierra Leone, over 64,000 children, 6 to 59 months, pregnant and lactating women across the 16 districts in the country will benefit from the Moderate Acute Malnutrition Treatment Program. Dr. Hussein Utal is the country director of World Food Program. During the launch of the program in Kenema, he said the aim is to improve the nutritional status of vulnerable populations such as children, pregnant and lactating women, and adolescent girls. If a child is malnourished, uh, this can affect them tomorrow in terms of their intellectual capacity. Everybody wants that the children grow up to be doctors, lawyers, nurses, but if they are malnourished, they will not be able to achieve that. So it's very important. Uh, with parents that they give this food to the children and that not to sell any of these commodities, uh, really give it to the children, let them eat it, let them be strong and healthy. Our partnership is very important because it cannot be done by one, one agency. In his statement, as he launched the program, Deputy Minister 2 of the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, Dr. Amara Jambai, called on all stakeholders to work concertedly to steam stunting, which has a permanent impact on the child, affecting future productivity. Our focus over the years has been on severe and acute malnutrition. But now we've seen that we need to go after the uh, moderate malnutrition, which becomes severe in the long run. But if you can manage that, then you are going to get less cases. In a statement read on behalf of the Head of Development Irish Embassy, Mary O'Neill, states that the priority of Ireland in the COVID-19 crisis response is to contribute to reducing the incidents and mitigating the impact of the pandemic among vulnerable populations. Albert George Sheriff, AYV News, Freetown. Residents at Constituency 110 in the Western Rural District have complained of neglect by government for failing to redo the parliamentary by-elections for almost two years now. The overall election results were cancelled due to violence that erupted in one of the voting centres. Memona to Bangura reports. Constituency 110. A place mad with spark challenge. It has gone over a year without representation since the sitting MP was removed to a high court verdict. Although by elections were held last year, but the results were cancelled due to eruption of violence at one of the polling centers. Since then, a spiral of silence now hovers around the whole election's rerun process. While constituents feel the pain of neglect without representation in parliament. Um, it's not easy. 
because for our whole constituency for the Nogal Representation of Parliament, it means we are not considered, we are not part of uh, Salon or we are not considered for our sister, we serve and we all right. We are not feel good because it happened, but the difficulty is too much, especially for we, the local ex them and the councillors. Cheat on the people of this country, for so here we did. Uh, a whole presidential term without a uh, uh, member of uh, uh, parliament for this area, which means uh, I'm not sure the government plan to do anything for it. Most of the goodness are within the can, then they jump in and go. We know they, we know they, we know they get that, we know they post where they represent to it. We know get, uh, 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 we know they get, we hit man, no progress. We will not get honorable for why we go, we will go cry to we'll say this year and this this nine the money in our community. We will not get her. Then down there with the we feel her right now because they read the other community, they already the development. We will not get nothing. Now. Even the chairperson of National Elections Watch, Masela Samba Sise, believes the situation is not good for democracy and development. I think the events in constituency 110 is very unfortunate for democracy, elections, and development. You know, since 2018, they've not been able to have a representative in parliament. And I believe, I mean, we at National Elections Watch had a discussion at constituency 110. The people are very much aggrieved. And I believe that the National Electoral Commission, with immediate effect, must make it uh, uh, um, a matter of priority to conduct the elections in constituency 1110. The constituency is now at the crossroad and the constituents are yearning to have elections and development in the constituency. Emuna Tubangura, AYB News, Freetown. The Africa Young Voices Media Empire received an award for Best International Media House in the third edition of the Special Movie Awards hosted in the Gambia. The award was officially presented today to the Chief Executive Officer, Founder and President of AYV Media Empire, Ambassador Anthony Navuginio, at an impressive ceremony held at AYV Media Empire Head Office in Freetown. Michael John Fofana has more. Africa Young Voices Media Empire is a household name not just in Sierra Leone but across the globe. This, according to the CEO and President Ambassador Anthony Navo Jr., is the second international award AYV Media Empire is receiving in just a month. The award was presented to AYV by Desmond Feeney, one of Sierra Leone's well-known actors. In his brief statement, he commended AYV for their active participation in promoting movies production in the country. Thank you. 
In response, Ambassador Navo dedicated the award to viewers and customers who in diverse ways contribute to the good of the empire. He also assured the public that AYV will continue with the good work and represent Sierra Leone internationally. Michael John Fofana, AYV News in Freetown. Community health officer at Zeme Hospital, Bernard Levy, has requested that government establish a COVID-19 response center at Zeme Town. He said there is a possible threat of further transmission of the virus through transporting COVID-19 patients to Pujang. Adding that, with the center situated in the town, the risk will be mitigated, as Salif Uchayunokama reports. Zemi is one of the main border crossing points and a link for trade between Sierra Leone and Liberia. The community health officer for the settlement says, out of the 24 confirmed cases of COVID-19 recorded in Pujan district, eight were from the Zemi township. He noted that there is no account of death so far, which is considered a plus for the district. Yeah, I've been in the center. If we move out, and we'll see one build, big building. We'll have been the response center for Ebola, but like that is not the case of um, COVID-19. This part, whole area going down the, the border area, Zimin at a bigger town, and then we can always get more cases them um, in terms of patient flow. So like a, 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 a necessary for them to get a center now because um, imagine a case being confirmed then in the, in the travel, the means of um, transmission is higher than if somebody then say a positive they want to just have for confine them now instead of moving to here, here and there. So that is a challenge really for the government to make get a center now for COVID-19. Commanding officer for the 14th Infantry Battalion in Pujeon, Lieutenant Colonel Julius Sanko said, none of the COVID-19 cases in Zemi were as a result of cross-border activities. He added that it is vital to have a COVID-19 response center in Zemi as it will significantly contribute to reducing the number of confirmed cases in Pujeon district. Adding that resident workers involved in the Liberia border road construction are the most hit. Uh, out of that um, 24, I could remember seven of them are the Senegalese workers that are working for that company. So if we can uh, do it proportionately, uh, proportionately uh, uh, in terms of percentage, I think they've contributed yes, the largest to the um, number of cumulative cases that we've got in uh, on this street. We know those figures because we have been providing security for quarantine homes, for treatment centers. So uh, for all the cases, we are always uh, uh, updated. The CHO is also asking government to include all the essential drugs in the free health care package to benefit the less privileged women and children who cannot afford to buy cost recovery drugs. Salivu Jerno Kamara, AYV News in Zemi. Commercial motorbike riding is gradually becoming a hub for many youths to be gainfully employed, which is of essence to Sierra Leone's economic predicaments. However, the rate of fatal accidents and indiscipline among bike riders is one thing that the union frowns at. To curb this menace, Commercial Motorbike Riders Union has engaged bike riders on indiscipline, violence and respect for road signs and the general laws of the country. A reporter, Sheikh Mohammed Sila, filing the story. Most youth in the country over the years have been involved in bike riding, which has provided jobs for them and helped them support their families. Though improving the social economy of the country, John Banyan, National Secretary General for the Union, added that the rate of accidents in the country by bike riders is as a result of overspeeding and lawlessness. I think uh, these are some of the issues we are here for, to sensitize them on issues of the rainy season, and that we must observe the rule signs and we must make sure we go by them. And uh, we have so many executives cut across the region who are charged with the responsibility, having meeting with them at their own various parks. As you are talking about either the lawlessness or indiscipline or joining other criminals, called criminals being as thieves, come to a minima. It has minimized. In the sense, we are always having them to a meeting. We are sensitizing them on what is supposed to be done. Ishmael Sandi, the Western Rural Chairman for the Union, called on them to respect authorities and encourage them to continue paying for their tickets in order to improve the operations in the Union. Is this picture? You get accidents or you see? You get go, go to the institute office. 
That hundred, two hundred thousand that you want to spend, we can come to spend again. Let me ride with focus. Let me get focus while we ride this bike. We need to obey the road signs. When police stop you, stop. You don't know how to stop you. When BMO stop you, stop. You don't know how to stop you. By that, we will avoid accidents. The sensation end up the national prayer for riders, especially during the COVID pandemic and against accidents. Sheikh Mohammed Sila, AYV News, Freetown. Zendris Foundation Incorporated has supported Abadin Women's Center with medical items worth millions of loans to aid in their support work to women and children. The support was penetrated at children and women with fistula health conditions. The medical items are catheters, surgical gloves, colapas, topas, and program, among others. Let's take the story. On behalf of Zendris Foundation, we donate these items to you, and we hope that the women of the center will be The moment mark a symbolic presentation of assorted medical items by Zendris Foundation Incorporated to Abadin Women's Center at their main hub in Abadin, western of Freetown. Despite recent progress, Sierra Leone's maternity lifetime risk of maternal death remains high. The support, according to Carlos Richard Sanko, country director of Zendris Foundation Sierra Leone, to the vulnerability of patients at the center makes the support timely. Looking at the vulnerability that we have here, you know, so when we find cases of this nature, then we can just put them out of them. Okay, yes, you can have them. So in the area of education, too, it's that's the stuff. Procurement and stores manager at Sabadin Women's Center, Makia Tukanu, commended Zendris Foundation Incorporated for such timely support emphasizing its relevance to the complicated issues they are faced on a daily basis. We appreciate these items and for sure we will make use of them. We will use them for our children, the department, the maternity department. Those items are, are disposable, like the aprons are used for the convicts, they are very important. And like this colostomy, it's used for most times than the fistula patients. Though um, they are not right now at the center because of the convict, but later on, when they come back, we'll use them. Also like some bandage, gauze, they are very useful for the maternity unit. The donated items are hoped will serve the intended purpose. Samuel Kuruma, AYV News Freetown. This is Primetime News on AYV Television and Radio. We'll be back with more news after this break. House Smith Sierra Leone is back with Season 2 and a whopping cash prize of 250 million neons plus a full round trip to Dubai. Go grab a form now for 150,000 neons at any NYV and Africell offices nationwide or go to www.africell.sl or www.nyvnews.com to download the Housemate Sierra Leone 2020 form. Or you can fill and submit the form online along with a two minutes video. Tell us who you are. Show us your talent. Payment for forms should be done through AfriMoney on 0882010020. Deadline for the submission of forms is the 21st of August. But remember, successful contestants will be screened and tested for COVID-19. Keep the house safe and clean. House Met Sir Leon 2020, brought to you by AYP and AfriCell. Welcome back. You're watching and listening to Primetime News on Africa Young Voices, television channel 33 and the radio 101.6 FM. I am Samuel Ibrahim Koroma. We're now in um, Kenema District. The Minister of Agriculture and Forestry has ended a two-day national retreat for the year 2020 in the eastern, city, eastern region city of Kenema. Well, the retreat is to put plans in place for the 2021 agricultural year. The two-day retreat was held at a Peace Garden Hall. Ibrahim Jacobs Sheriff has more story. 
In order to boost agriculture in a country for the present and future generation, the ministry called mandate is to formulate agricultural development policies and to advise the government on such policies relating to its administration and the management of the agricultural sector of the country's economy. As an initiative of the new direction government in order to organize, attract and coordinate investments in the agricultural sector, the two days retreat hopes to ensure economic growth and to increase productivity in the country's staple food and other agricultural produce. In attendance here must be aware of the critical role that agriculture is supposed to play in the socio-economic development of this nation. As we are all aware, the sector employs about 65% of Sierra Leoneans and makes up about 55% of the country's GDP. It is therefore no coincidence that His Excellency the President recognizes agricultural development as an engine for socio-economic development. Underscoring the significance of the retreat, the Permanent Secretary said the retreat is designed to accord sector areas the opportunity to brainstorm and to bring out suggestions that will help develop the agricultural sector. This two days retreat is therefore designed to accord sector players the opportunity brainstorm and come up with a blueprint that will guide the implementation of agricultural programs. The Deputy Minister of Agriculture and Forestry One advised all to take the retreat serious. I will advise whatever we decide, let us not forget to plan on how to actualize a successful and mechanized bumper harvest. Let us all together understand and communicate the plans that we developed here today. The workshop ended with presentations of sector's flagship programs for 2021. AYV News, Abraham Jacob Shea reporting from Kenem. Now in Bombali District. So before now, movement of people and goods in certain communities at by Shiri Chiefdom was difficult, especially during the rains. As a recent development, a 1.3 kilometer bridge has been constructed to ease this challenge. Abbas reports. Longest locally made bridges in the country. And uh, we're here to really know the social and economic importance of this bridge being constructed by an indigenous. Before the construction of the Mamanso Bridge at Baishari Chiefdom, Bombali District, social and economic activities of eight communities used to be naturally banned in the rains due to the depth of this tributary. Ibrahim Conte, a resident of Mamanso, explains their annoying experience before the existence of this bridge. They would have used that for one mammy, we don't can dry up here, but he left now the place because the mammy been afraid the canoe, then you know, even can now the place was like for gross, go upside and now they go die. Dr. Roland Touré saw the need to chip in, and according to him, the 1.3 kilometer bridge cost him approximately 35 million leons. I have a habit of riding around the villages to see uh, uh, common people and interact with them. And uh, that's how I spoke to this place at one time. And then people started telling me about the dangers they experience during the rainy season and the restraint, the constraints they do encounter as well to go from one community to another. And farmers who do have their farms as well, you know, over uh, the stream. They find it hard, and they told me the story of uh, a woman that uh, drowned in this river who was struggling to go across when there was no bridge. And that motivated me to make sure that we save lives, you know, because every life matters, and then that's how I started to embark on the construction of this bridge. With this appropriate development, Yabom Kapaktaroli, a ceremonial chief at Beshari Chivram, says the perennial challenge in accessing medical services by pregnant women has been put to rest. Materials used to construct this bridge were locally fetched, and Ibrahim Suri Kaloko was a contractor. Well, I use power saw, armor, and uh, nails to build them for construct this bridge. Uh, it's about one year I think for do this bridge. I go able to build the Lunge bridge if then give me that work day. This is a 1.3 kilometers bridge, and uh, the only bridge which will be longer than the Mamanso bridge. It's when government of Sierra Leone would have completed the Lungi Bridge. Abbasise, AYV News, Bombali District. And finally in sports, the Minister of Sports, Ibrahim Nyelenke, has informed journalists that the proposals for the ease of restrictions on sporting activities are on the desk of President Pio. 
Nyerenke said their plea could be actualized in the not too distant time. He emphasized that coaches should engage their athletes on theoretical aspects until the ban is lifted. Lanzo Makley has more. With the hue and cry over the past four months from athletes due to the ban on sports, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, fans and even sports administrators in the country are calling on the government to lift the ban. Minister of Sports Ibrahim Yelenke says within a week or two, the government will come out with a statement on the position of sports activities. I did say proposals are now on the desk of His Excellency the President. Yeah? for him to lift or to ease some restriction related to sporting activities. Uh, I said, my statement, I said, the football you talk about is in two folds. You have the theoretical aspect, you have the practical. Minus not kicking that ball, you can play it through the board. Hmm? It's a system. You start, you, start, you start job now, you start your work now. Hmm? with your players, using the board until the ban is lifted. Yeah? But the rest are sure, maybe if not this week, maybe next week. I refer to the follow up because as I speak, His Excellency is on his way now to the team. Tomorrow we will follow up to see that if not this week or next week, most of you, I think, we start kicking the ball. After Sierra Leone recorded its first index case of the coronavirus on March 31st this year, a pronouncement by the Ministry of Sport banned all sports activities until further notice. According to the notice from the Ministry of Sport, the ban was to prevent athletes from contacting the virus as some disciplines are contact sports. Lance for McLean, AYV Sports, Freetown. And that's it for Primetime News tonight. Send us your feedback via info at ayvnews.com or you can also connect with us online at www.ayvnews.com or follow us on Twitter or perhaps our handles on AYV Sewell Dune. I am Samuel Ibrahim Koroma. Stay safe. Good night. <music>